squeaky. <laughs> okay, stop that. Ow, 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 ow. <sighs> Rainbows. Welcome back to my channel. Say hello, Hazel. Hello. <laughs> I will adjust this so you guys can see us both. So today I am doing a, another postpartum update. <laughs> Hazel's very excited. Uh, this is five month update. So Hazel is currently five months. Yeah six months old in like a week's time which is insane how fast that went I just don't know where the time has gone <laughs> honestly like it's it seems like yesterday that she was born I've never known time to go so freaking quick <laughs> so as always I have notes because my mind's a sieve <laughs> and it probably always will be for the rest of my life we'll start off with Hazel's kind of updates <laughs> And then we'll talk a bit about mine. Not that there's really been that much with me. So, all right, Hazel, rolling like crazy in all directions. Just eat, loves it, loves it. Rolls multiple times, like somersaults. It's insane. Um, she loves her little back shuffles where she will like shuffle up on her back. She'll arch her back if she's getting really frustrated and annoyed and just, yeah. I'm finding that like, she's not quite sitting up on her own at the moment. She is, I reckon very, very soon, like she'll sit up for like 30 seconds on her own, no one touching her, but then she'll kind of slump to the side. So she's not at the stage yet where she's 100% sitting up unsupported. She's starting to grab absolutely everything, putting everything in her mouth. If I'm having a smoothie, she'll be like, <laughs> and trying to grab the smoothie from me and wanting to have some of my smoothie. She does that with Lee's beers as well. Not that he obviously wants her to have any of it, but everything, She's picking up and it's going in her mouth and her little hands are just freaking everywhere. Here, have this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's crazy. She has been teething a lot as well, which has been lots of fun. I did do a little story on my Instagram and asked you guys what the amber teething necklaces are like if you guys I think they're worth it and at the moment it is 60 40 so 60 percent say yes 40 percent say no a lot of people have said it depends on the baby themselves so we've I feel like I've tried everything with kind of teething um, we've got the bongella we've tried frozen berries in like the fresh food feeder because she is on solids now um, and she loves like the coolness of it I've put like little drink bottles because she's having a little bit of water and she has her drink bottle with the handles and sips it herself it's so cute um, I've, yeah I've tried cool cooling water Panadol, Nurofen, Panadol and Nurofen together which I don't like giving her like I want to avoid giving her Panadol if I can it seems like there's been you know a few weeks stints where every day she's pretty much had Panadol and the poor little poppet but sometimes I'm like at my wits end and I don't know what to do she's got teething rusks teething little rings that you put in the freezer with like saline water in it uh, one thing that we recently got which seems to be working I've only given her a few doses of it but it's a more natural alternative is the teething powder I can see it and I'll just grab it for you guys so this is the teething powder here it is Wadella baby teething powder it's got chamomile in it and I just mix it with a little bit of water suck it up in the syringe and give it to her she hates the taste but I think it's working so I've given her a dose of that already today yeah I feel like I've kind of tried most things so I think the next thing will be an amber yeah. necklace she's dribbling not intensely and like no teeth have really poked through yeah. although I can see white so it's like any minute now hopefully she'll she'll get some relief so yeah as I said she is on solids um, I started solids a few weeks into like her fifth month of life so she's been on solids for a few weeks now started off just little bits here and there um, I kind of would give her a breastfeed first and then try some like baby cereal because they did say that iron rich foods are very important I'm not planning on giving her meat or anything like that just trying my best to get real kind of iron rich foods so I did that a few times she didn't really seem to be too interested I started it because it seems like she was getting really fussy with the boob like she 
not that she'd had enough but it was so hard to try and feed her and even now it's, it's quite challenging I have to be in pretty much a pitch black room no sounds no distractions nothing like that and then she'll feed if there's other people around or whatever she'll just crack it she'll cry even though I know she's hungry and the boob is like right there she won't latch on and it was just like oh my god you're doing my head in so I pretty much had to go to like a completely dark room which sometimes doesn't work so after starting to introduce introduce the solids like there was a few weeks where it was a little bit funny but now it's almost like she's expecting breakfast so I give her breakfast and lunch no, we haven't done any dinner yet at the moment what we're doing is um, I give her a breastfeed in the morning like I gave her one about five o'clock this morning and then come around eight o'clock she wants some breakfast she's not interested in the boob even though I know she's hungry I try and put her on the boob and she's just not interested so I sit her in a high chair I get some breakfast I've actually made lots of baby food put my thermo mix into action which is awesome I will show you guys so for instance um, this is what they look like this is pear and plum because plums are really high in iron so I pretty much steamed some of the fruit kept it mostly raw if I didn't have to steam it but like the harder fruits obviously I steamed and did this for veggies as well um, pureed it with a little bit of breast milk if it needed to be thinned out and then I put it into ice cube trays put it in the freezer to set once they were set pop them out wrap them in cling wrap and then just put them in a ziploc bag so I've got pear and plum this morning I did a, um, strawberry and banana I've also got strawberry and apple and I did pumpkin carrot and potato which makes makes her super super constipated so I think it's potato um, and then yesterday I tried peas and spinach and she freaking loved it she loved it the most out of all of the food I made it this morning this is peas and spinach with a little bit of breast milk and she loves it <laughs> oh good girl yeah, good girl. <laughs> so pretty much in the morning, I will grab one of those little ice cube trays, put it in the microwave just to frost it a bit and maybe mix in a little bit of the rice cereal and then give that to her. She doesn't eat a whole cube yet, probably like half a cube, but she absolutely loves it. And then she'll kind of have a bit of a play and stuff like that. I've found as well, like the last few weeks, she has not wanted to go to bed during the day unless I'm either cuddling her, like holding her, or going for a walk, or going for a drive. Like that has been the only way I've been able to get her to sleep. Basically, most of the time I have to put her in the pram and go for a sleep, go for a walk. Um, and some days I'm exhausted and I don't feel like going for like three walks a day. She's stubborn, she'll put up the biggest fight. She's like, I'm not going to sleep. And you'll see it and she's like, I'm not going to, and her eyes will be rolling back and she's like, no. I'm not going to sleep so that's been fun she has as well stopped sleeping through the night so from one month old to five months old she was sleeping through the night every single night which was amazing but at the same time I got used to it so as pretty much as soon as I started introducing solids bam sleep regression and she stopped sleeping through the night and I was just like oh my oh my god when she was sleeping throughout the night I'd wake up in the morning and both my boobs would be full and just ginormous I've only ever fed her off one boob at a time she's never wanted to go off both boobs in one feed so I'd always feed her off one boob express the other uh, so I was getting a fair amount of milk built up and some of it had been in the freezer for coming up to six months and I'm like holy crap I'm not gonna use all this milk so thankfully I was actually able to give it all away to a mama in need um, a few mamas in need actually which has been amazing and I feel so thankful that I've been able to do that I am still expressing when I can because I want to build up another good supply and you know give that away as well and I am getting some made into some soap for hazel as well so breast milk soap anyway what was I saying since she has been waking up throughout the night she's obviously been having nighttime feeds which has been emptying my boobs and then I wake up and I wouldn't really need to express so I haven't really been expressing as much recently because she has been feeding throughout the night 
as well she started to like I'd feed her and put her back into her bed because she's never slept in our bed and I've always been so paranoid about her sleeping in our bed like me rolling over and squashing her or the blanket covering her face or her basically suffocating like that is my biggest fear um, but those few nights when she was getting up She'd fall asleep in my arms, I'd lay her back down, she'd wake up screaming, she'd roll over, then get stuck and just frustrated or she'd back shuffle all the way to the top of the crib and then her head would hit the bar and she'd be like, ah! And it was like a constant battle and I thought, fuck it, I'm just gonna put her in our bed because I need some sleep. It was like the decision between having her in our bed, getting some rest, having her in her own bed and not getting any sleep. So as soon as I picked her up, put her in our bed, bam, she was out like a light. She's been super, super clingy and just wanting cuddles and wanting to be near you all the time. So it's been, it's been nice, but at the same time, it does make it a bit challenging to do things. So ever since then, she's just been sleeping in our bed in between me and Lee. I know they say like, don't put them in between because they can overheat and stuff like that. I don't want her falling off the bed at either because our bed's really really high and we don't have bars and pillows and stuff wouldn't work um, so yeah she sleeps in between me and Lee it's been actually really really nice I haven't rolled over and squashed her neither has Lee um, the blankets don't cover her face or anything like that so it has been really really good um, and she's actually been sleeping a lot better and feeding is just so much easier I literally just pop out a boob feed her and away we go I actually woke up one night to feed her and then obviously must have fallen asleep woke up an hour or so later, my boob's still in her mouth. She's passed out, I was passed out, and I'm just like, oh. Clip my crop back up, I'm like, okay. <laughs> so when, she, when I do feed her at night, it's almost like dream feed in a way. I don't bother burping her. If she's done a poo, I'll change a nappy, but otherwise I just leave her because I don't want to wake her back up. So I feed her and she just drifts back off to sleep. She's been really good, she hasn't really had much colic or gas or anything like that. I don't know if that's because I don't eat meat. I don't have all those acids. I'm not sure. Could be, could not be. Who knows? But yeah, she's never really been a gassy baby. Well, now she's started solids. Her farts, holy crap, her farts are lethal. Like, they're really, really bad. And they will follow you. And her poos are definitely more kind of human-like, which is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> She's definitely talking a lot more, like gooing, garring, going rah, 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 rah. Has so much more personality. Um, she loves standing. So because I have been trying to, you know, get her to sit more on her own, I go to sit her down and she won't have a bar of it. She likes to stand. Her legs are insanely strong. I mean, I know this is a bit hard because she's just resting on my legs so I'm just supporting her balance wise her legs are completely supporting her so she is insanely strong with her legs she prefers to stand over sitting which does make it a bit hard because like you obviously have to be with her constantly oh look at that dribble so yeah she's loves it loves it I'll zoom you guys down oh see now you're gonna show everyone how you stand? Look at those legs. Look at them. So strong. Hey? Ah, so strong. We have started to baby proof as well. So I've gone through all the cupboards in the bathroom, sorted everything out, starting to put all the chemicals and stuff up high. This bottom drawer in, down here, I've done completely with her toys because eventually she's going to be able to open it as well I have completely overhauled my makeup um, I do have a storage video coming out soon or it's already out who knows um, so all of my makeup is now in these storage containers in this um, filing drawer which can be locked ha huh. so it's gonna oh, it's awesome I think that is mainly for hazel that she's been doing she, has been grabbing my hair, oh my god, and it's always the same spot, like she'll grab right in these little fine bits of hair here, and then like the back of my arm, and her nails are like freaking razors. Oh, she actually drew blood on my arm the other day by just digging her little fingers in. <sighs> I love her, but man. So in terms of me, I am still waiting to get into the physio. I haven't heard anything. Um, because I am going through the hospital so it's free but I know I can obviously book to see just a normal physio but I just don't want to spend the money I'm just stingy like I 
rather buy stuff for Hazel than, you know, spend the money on that, especially when I do have the option of getting it for free. So I'm still waiting to kind of go in. So they have kind of considered me high risk based off my symptoms. So yeah, I also have bought some postpartum recovery pants, even though we're almost six months postpartum, I just thought screw it because my symptoms have been like sore back, getting those back twinges, tailbone feels funny. I don't know if I have abs separation, but my abs feel a little bit, it's weird. Like I can kind of do sit-ups, like not saying I've been doing sit-ups, but if I sit up from the bed, I have no issue doing that, but it just feels kind of weak as well. Like my belly button is still quite large. And one of my friends who's a nurse said at like two months postpartum, you should only be able to fit one finger in your belly button. And I can fit like three like three fingers or four fingers almost. So my belly button is still quite large and I still do have a lot of overhang with my belly. So I have no idea, like I'm still waiting to go to the physio. I have no idea what's going on. If everything has kind of gone back to where it should be or not, who knows? So I bit the bullet and bought the, um, SRC recovery leggings. I found a website that does after pay because they are freaking expensive. I wish I kind of bought them sooner. They're about $200 for a pair of leggings, which is insane, but they're compression, the medical grade, and they're meant to help with like hip pain and back pain and perineum trauma and stuff like that. So I have all of those. Um, so hopefully that does start to help and give me a little bit of relief. We'll see. We'll see. I'll keep you guys updated. So yeah, I just, I think it was um, Nursing Angel, something like that, that I bought them off, which does after pay. So hell yeah. I think that is really about all. Um, oh yeah, Hazel rolls on the change table now as well, which is amazing. <laughs> it's so cool, like seeing her develop into this more little person and seeing just more of her. I am starting to see a little bit more of myself in her. I mean, she's always a daddy's girl. She just is daddy's clone. But I am starting to see a little bit more of myself in her, which is nice as well. Um, and her hair is starting to kind of change colors. Like some days it looks almost red. Some days it looks really blonde. She still has a lot of that dark hair on the back that she was just born with. So yeah, that's, that is our life at the moment. It's actually been amazing as well because Lee struggles to sleep in in the mornings. So he's been waking up pretty much cleaning the whole house for me. Not that the house was an absolute write off because it actually works a lot better. I wake up to a really clean house and I find it so much easier to keep the house clean throughout the day rather than just having this bomb every single morning and trying to catch up and chase my ass the whole day. Whole day. So it's actually been really amazing and really nice that he's done that for us because it just makes things so much easier so thank you honey <laughs> and it's just allowed me to you know have time with hazel and then cook dinner and i don't have all this crazy amount of housework to do because lee's been helping out and that way when he gets home from work um and he's exhausted and not wanting to do anything he doesn't because he, he cleaned up for me in the morning so oh it's awesome and I just sleep through it I don't hear anything that, that goes on so I will show you guys my stomach this is five months postpartum if you guys follow me on Instagram you know I am not afraid of showing what my body looks like um, I feel that definitely it needs to be shown a lot more because I feel like all of the postpartum bodies that are shown on social media are the gorgeous ones, the ones without stretch marks, the ones that have pretty much bounced back to their former glory. Um, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that and I'm not having a go at those mums in any way. I'm just saying that you never see any other versions of postpartum bodies on Instagram. I have found a couple of Instagram pages which I absolutely friggin love. Every time I see one of their photos, I'm like, yes, get it. Um, because they're pretty much just like me or women that have saggy bellies or women that have stretch marks and stuff like that. And I'm like, yes, this is amazing. I want to see more of this because it makes me feel like a normal person. I'll see if I can find any of them in my liked pictures. I don't think I can. If I find them, I will link them in the description box below for you guys. I just feel it would be so much better if there was more representation of what other women look like postpartum on social media because, you know, it seems like only the perfect people are on there and not everyone is perfect. Even the perfect people aren't perfect. So yeah, I will show you guys. <laughs> oh, she does not want to let go. All right. So, this is me. Hi. Hi. 
you, Chewbacca. <laughs> um, this is how everything is looking. My stretch marks are definitely fading a lot more. I still have this line, which has always kind of been there, and I do have some overhang as well. An interesting thing, though, I found, like, just to show you guys how different it can be, this is just me relaxing, letting it all hang out, and then if I clench my ab muscles, this is how it looks. Like, how insane is that? Um, oh, which actually hurt. I probably should not have done that. No shame. I still, every week when I go to swim school with Hazel, I rock a bikini. Cause I'm like, I don't care. Look at my gorgeous body. <laughs> I just kind of refuse to cover it up on principle in a way. Like I don't want to, I'm definitely not ashamed of it. So why would I cover it up? That's just me. Anyway, how many times have I picked this up now? I wonder. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you rainbows for watching. I hope you liked the video and yeah, I'll see you guys all in my next one. <laughs> Bye. I just thought of something again, so I'm back. Um, I remember in previous vlogs, I said how we put Hazel to sleep awake, never limited noise around her and she'd sleep and it was awesome. Yes, that worked at that particular time, but now no friggin' way. Um, if I was to lay her down awake, ready for bed, even if she was half asleep, she would wake up and scream. So the only way I can really get her to sleep, and I already mentioned this, was me basically rocking her to sleep like this, or going for a walk or going for a drive. Pretty much, unless we're just watching Netflix in bed and she just happens to fall asleep on her own. As well, we cannot make a lot of noise when she's asleep now. She will wake up at the smallest noise. So even like talking, she'll wake up. Um, even when she's tired and Lee laughs at something funny, she'll cry. <laughs> Wait, you pop it. So yeah, I'm um, just, you know, letting you guys know that as well. So yes, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm, oh, I'm just winging it. Oh my God. She's got the biggest clump of my hair. <gasps> ow, Hazel. Ow, ow, no, ow, let go. Ow, let go, let go. Ow, oh, jeez. You are cheeky. Yes, you are. You're gorgeous.